there and welcome back to the Letty Careers channel. My name is Andrew, I'm a case interview peer advisor and today we're going to be starting a new series designed at helping uh, practice case interview skills. So there's going to be a case interview question of the week and then we're going to walk through some steps together on how you might get in the right mindset uh, and take the right steps in order to solve that problem. So before we get started, I just want to walk you through some common misconceptions that we see in case interviews. Uh, and the first misconception, the one that I want to stress the most, is there's only one right approach to the case. Uh, so there's plenty of different approaches. They're just looking for you to take an organized um, and thoughtful approach and really explain what you're doing. So again, there, there's several credible approaches to these cases and several credible solutions. Uh, the next one is that the interviewer expects you to get to the right answer. Uh, oftentimes the interview doesn't even know the right answer. Uh, they just want to see a thoughtful and well-structured response to see how you think through some problems. Next, I want to run through some common mistakes. Uh, so not listening or not understanding the problem you're solving. Going back to what we previously just touched on, uh, we can see some unstructured thinking. So if they can't uh, you know, know how you're thinking, um, that's not going to help. And then moving too quickly with an incomplete data or failing to talk through your logic. All of these things are really important in case interviews. So the number one thing that they're wanting to see uh, is how you think through a problem and how you might approach it. So before we do this, just want to give you a couple reminders. Really remember to talk through your answer. Uh, understand why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, if you come across very large numbers, feel free to kind of round those or take estimates. They're not looking for that perfect solution uh, and they don't want to get caught up in the numbers. They just want to see how you think. And finally, really back up your logic. So just explain why you're taking what steps you are uh, and you'll be, you'll be all set in a case interview. So today's case interview question of the week, uh, how many golf balls would fit inside a 747 airplane? Um, so at first, this can be a pretty daunting question. Uh, you'll see this a lot kind of as a brain teaser question in interviews. And today we're gonna be talking through some steps on how to tackle this problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and share a whiteboard here. And we'll talk through the case. So at the start here, you'll see that I've kind of drawn a rough, um, a rough rectangle here. So this is me envisioning the 747. Um, now I'm going to estimate that a 747 is 200 feet long by 20 feet wide. And then I'm also just from my experience in planes, going to estimate that it's about 10 feet tall. Okay, so now we've got a base understanding of the space that we're filling. Now, from my experience with a golf ball, I'm, I'm not going to worry too much about the circumference. Uh, I'm just going to say that they're roughly one inch by one inch. And again, this is an estimate that I'm taking based on my experience with golf balls and just uh, having seen them before. Uh, this might not be the perfect answer. It might not be the right answer but I'm gonna make sure that I'm talking through my steps here and this is, this is what we're gonna go with. So next, we need to figure out how many of these one by one golf balls can fit in the space that we've identified here. Okay, so this is where we're gonna go ahead and multiply to get our floor area. So we've got 200 feet times 20 feet. Um, we're gonna go ahead and convert these to inches. And so what we do here is we're just gonna drop these points right here. So we know that there's 12 inches and a foot. So we'll do 12 times two, 24, and then we'll just tack these two zeros back on. So we know that there's 2,400 inches and 200 square feet, or 200 feet long. Same thing with this, we're gonna drop this zero. Uh, and we know two times 12 is 24. And then we'll just go ahead and put that zero back on. So there's 240 inches there. And we're going to do the same thing with the 10 feet tall. Okay, so we know that this is 120 inches tall. So now we've got everything in inches. We need to figure out how many um, fit in each one. And so this is where I will break out my calculator. And you can also do this mental math and round if you need. Uh, but some interviewers will I uh, you know, a calculator. So we're going to do 2,400 times 240. And that's going to get us to 576. Oh, uh, let me undo, undo. 
576,000 square feet. And now we need to take into account our height. So we'll come over here because we want cubic inches. So we'll multiply that out times 120. So that's going to get us to 69 million. 120, 120,000, excuse me. So from here, I've got a rough guesstimate of how many golf balls uh, we could fit in the airplane. And I'm gonna go one step further here. Um, just having you know been in a couple airplanes in my life, I'm gonna go ahead and estimate that 25% of the area is taken up by seats. So I'm going to multiply this out by 0.75. And that's going to get us to 51,840,000. So based on this prompt, if I was in an interview, I would go ahead and guess that there are 51,840,000 golf balls that could fit in a 747 airplane. Now you notice that I was very aware of talking through what I was doing. Uh, so I definitely took the liberty of taking some estimates here, but I made that very apparent in what I was doing um, and, and talked through my answer. So every one of these numbers here, I could back up with my logic as to why I picked them. Um, so I really just wanted to walk an interviewer through this and then uh, take some liberties there on, on, on estimating. Uh, and break the problem down into smaller, more solvable bits. So you'll see that that I, uh, you know, clarified the question before we started. We dropped decimal points here, uh, and we were able to confidently talk through our answer. And so that that's the whole goal of of case interviewing is that you want to be able to take problems uh, and break them down into. Let me share my screen here again. You want to be able to take this prompt that they give you and break it down into a more solvable problem. Um, you know, this seems pretty daunting at the start. It's definitely an, a question that's appeared in many interviewers, or many interviews before. Um, but you know, we're here every week to give you the tips and the tools and the know-how to solve these problems. If you're interested in more case interview resources, you can go ahead and schedule an appointment through Handshake with a case interview advisor. Uh, tune in next week for our next case interview question of the week.